and yet another attempt to go live. Um, this is my first time that I'm trying to do this uh, live. Actually, I tried another time with a guest, uh, but I failed miserably and I I don't know if it's gonna go well tonight again, but uh, I'm gonna try now and I'm not going to uh, move anything else. I'm not going to change anything else. Uh, and um, please, if you're here, put in the chat that you're here. Go! <laughs> I'm waiting for you guys because you were, there was lots of people in the other uh, broadcast but then the broadcast died and uh, now I, I'm figuring out if I should go on with this or, or not. So we have viewers, you guys are listening to me, can you type in the chat anything? I'm alive. Oh yeah, we are starting. So we're gonna do this live, okay? If, if that's, if it gets too bad, we're gonna do one tomorrow and we're gonna do another one after tomorrow. And we're not gonna do the day after, after tomorrow because then it's too much. Okay, guys. Okay, so, um, uh, I'm going to try to comment in the other link, but... If you guys can type the link here for your friends in the chat, please go there, do that for me, because it's, it's hard here for me to do it and I don't want to screw it up again, okay? So if you can just get the link of this live and type in the chat and say, come on guys, it's happening. Just please do that, okay? Ready for takeoff. So guys, yes, 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 Henrique Toscano. Yeah, you want this? And meanwhile, I'm gonna try to do this, but if you can, just go there and type. In the chat, okay? Um, I don't know if I can use the, the okay okay I'm, I'm going to comment here if I can can I comment I don't know if I can comment but please please do it for me content okay we get we have seven people and we're slowly building. Okay, I'm trying to open here and can I type a comment? Maybe I can or maybe not. Yeah, new live here, Jose, yes. New stream, please. I think that now that's the right one. Okay. Okay, guys, so we're gonna do this. We're gonna do this, okay? And first, okay, let's skip. You have two streams going on at the same time. I don't know what's going on. Oh, really, I have two streams? Um, that's crazy. I'm double me right now, am I? So let's time, last time checking here. So I don't bore you to death. Okay, this is the stream. Okay, last time I say that this thing is starting because this thing is starting now. Woof, I am hot in here. How are you guys? I'm getting crazy here because, oh my God, it's hard to do a live stream. I didn't know. It's way easier to make a MIDI controller. And it's gonna be how easy it is compared to make a live stream because, well, that's hard. But next one, it's going to be better. So guys, still first, some announcements. 
and put in the comments if like my voice is too loud, too low, anything. I'm seeing you here. So first, some announcements. It happens that we are doing this live during Black Friday week, and if you know my content, you know that I have some paid courses, like the Making Music with Arduino, and I have a new one, which is the Kai CAD PCB Design. So courses where I teach how to build MIDI controllers and how to create, uh, to build printed circuit boards. This is brand new. And uh, Black Friday started, and you can see the links here. But you have until Monday to buy with up to 60% of discount. But only for the people that are in the live, only to the people that stay until the end, I'm going to get, I'm going to give you even more discount. Even more, more than 60%. Only for the people of the live. I'm not going to send emails after telling the coupon. So it's only for you. Only if you stay until the end. Okay? And yeah, I have paid courses. I have bigger courses. But today, I'm going to share a lot. I mean, like most as I can in this live. Okay? And chat with you and answer all your questions. And uh, it's going to be a lot. Okay? So first, we're going to talk about MIDI controllers and or how to build MIDI controllers. So first thing is like, what is a MIDI controller? That may be, that might be obvious for you, for some of you, what a MIDI controller is, but for some people, it's not, okay? So a MIDI controller is an interface uh, that has, it's an interface that uses the MIDI protocol. So imagine that you have, it can be a launch pad like that. It can be a mixer. It can be a keyboard, okay? And this interface, this equipment, wants to send a type of information. Let's say you have a keyboard and you want to send the note C sharp 3 at half of intensity, like medium intensity, okay? And then you want to send uh, an F sharp and now you want to like in your DAW you want to trigger a sample and you want to send a MIDI control change or control a volume with MIDI control change with a different type of MIDI message so what is this MIDI is just information it tells what when and how it tells for example the note which note and when and with which uh, with which intensity, okay, or uh, the volume parameter, okay, uh, or the, the, the pan, like the position of the pan. So you can control uh, things like you can send notes or you can actually control things like the volume, uh, the parameters are inside your plugin. So that's MIDI. MIDI is just information. And MIDI actually stands for uh, Musical Instrument Digital Interface. And it's just a language, it's just a protocol. There's no sound with MIDI. MIDI has no sound, okay? And some interfaces that can use the MIDI protocol are called MIDI controllers, okay? So you use a MIDI controller to control another thing, to control a synthesizer, for example, to control a digital audio workstation, for example, or MIDI nowadays is used for so much. You can use for controlling a DJ software, a VJ software, even uh, photo editing software and video editing software like Adobe Premiere um, or Adobe Lightroom or Photoshop. So you can use MIDI controllers for uh, to a lot of things. Okay, but what if you want to control a cut off a filter of a synthesizer with the movement of your hand in the air, okay? Uh, what if you want to use MIDI of your DAW to control a set of lights in your stage? What if you want um, to control a motor? What if you want to create an art installation? What if you want to use a, the, the, the temperature of the air to make music. What if you want to get crazy? You won't find this in a store for sure. You won't find that on Guitar Center. How to convert uh, the wind, the speed of the wind into notes, whatever. 
So for that, you need to build yours. Um, so there's a couple reasons I believe and a couple reasons I am in love with of why you should build MIDI controllers. And one is things like that, for example, this costs, this cost me around $40 or in Brazil here like 150 reais or even like 120 reais. And if you bought this like a MIDI fighter, a MIDI fighter would cost you like $200, 250 So building a MIDI controller is so cheap, it's super cheap. So that's the first reason, okay? It's, it can be like five, 10 times cheaper than if you bought one in a store. Another reason, if you, if you like a, a certain plugin, if you like Massive, uh, Massive from Native Instruments, the, the synth, which I love, or if you like a specific compressor that you use a lot, if you have a like, um, generic MIDI controller, you're, it, it doesn't look like the, the, the plugin you use. It's, it's not the same, you know? So one thing you can do is creating your own MIDI controller that looks like the plugin that you have. So you can create customized uh, interfaces that looks like exactly the plugins that you have. Okay, so that's the second reason. And the third one is like the first thing I was talking, if you want to get crazy, you can just get crazy and create anything you want uh, with a MIDI controller with uh, an Arduino that I'm going to talk about more. So uh, one thing that I want to show you here is uh, a couple of the MIDI controllers I have built. So I am going to um, move here to my screen and I'm going to show you some of the MIDI controllers I have built uh, with the platform I'm going to show you, which is the Arduino. And press here to come back to scale. Now, it's everything mapped automatically for you because of the MIDI script. Now you can control volumes, sense, but it could be anything. That you want. Okay, so that was a couple, those were a couple of the things I've done. Uh, <clears throat> I stopped here because I think the connection started to get slower. But anyways, you can see in my YouTube channel and I, I have done from like, this is like the type of the first MIDI controller I have done. This is not the first, of course. Uh, but first thing I have done was a launch pad inspired on the MIDI fighter. Uh, so let me just talk a little bit about me. Maybe you don't know me, maybe you do. My name is Gustavo Silveira and I am Brazilian. And I think we have some Brazilians here. And I started because two reasons. Things are super expensive in Brazil. MIDI controllers are ridic ridiculously expensive. And at the time that I was, um, I graduated in music, by the way. Music composition, that's what I studied and I have been a musician my whole life. So no background in engineering. I'm not an engineer, I'm not a software engineer, electrical engineer, whatever, I am a musician. Uh, and all that I learned about um, electronics and programming was self-thought. And um, 
the reason I started researching that it was because I had an electronic music project and uh, I, I, I wanted to uh, smash buttons and perform and um, I didn't have money to buy a MIDI fighter or even like a push controller for Ableton. So I was like, ah, oh, what if I, if, I if I build my MIDI controller? What if? But there was no single place with all the information I needed to build a MIDI controller. So I digged, like I dug from all, all around the, the, the internet for months and uh, like it was a lot of trial and error. Way more error than uh, anything else. Was it was painful, but I was able to make my first MIDI controller. It was super nice. Then I did another one. And um, after I started making some, some people started to ask me, oh, can you do one for me? I was like, ah, yeah, if you pay me, yeah. And I did one, two, three, and I started to do to a couple people. And I thought, well, there's more people uh, wanting, probably there's more people wanting to build MIDI controllers. So I was, maybe I should just create a blog and teach people how to do it so people can have all the information they need to build MIDI controllers in one single place. And that's how the Nerd Musician was born. After that, I went to the United States to do a master's in music technology um, at Georgia Southern University. After that, I worked at Ball State University as human computer interaction inter electronics designer. And I decided to leave the United States and come back home to try to leave from um, YouTube and courses and this that we are doing today, which I love. Okay, so that's why I'm here today. And uh, I hope you enjoy, you enjoy it, you, you enjoy it too, god damn it. So, okay guys, so let's start with what we want today. We are going to talk about how to build MIDI controllers. So the first thing we need to do is understanding uh, the center, the core of this MIDI controller, the brain of this MIDI controller. So every electronics that does something uh, like, a, like a drone, does something complex, uh, like a robot, has a brain. So besides your brain, you're going to need another one. And for this project, or for MIDI controllers, we can use, it's not the only option, but it's probably the best option for beginners, which is an Arduino. So what an Arduino is? Okay, so focus. An Arduino is a credit-sized board that has a microcontroller. So this thing here, is a microcontroller. And the microcontroller will be the brain of your Arduino, of your MIDI controller. But what an Arduino does? Why an Arduino? We use an Arduino because the Arduino can get information from the physical world, like the touch of a button, the turn of a knob. So let me get something here, like, like a button. You can get a potentiometer. You can turn the knob, okay? You can get a distance sensor or a light sensor, whatever sensor. Anything that gathers information that from the physical world, real physical world, the Arduino can get that and transform into digital data. So the Arduino transforms the information from the physical world to the digital world. And for example, you can get this information, let's say the press of a button, and in the Arduino through some programming, and don't get scared with that, it's going to be the easiest way for you, with some programming, you can tell all. Oh, when you press this button, turn on an LED, for example. Or change the brightness of this LED when you turn the knob. Or send a MIDI note. So we can actually create 
MIDI controllers with the Arduino. So you can see here that this Arduino, this is the Arduino Uno, and we actually have different Arduinos. Uh, let me find another Arduino here. I just had one laying around, but okay, it's gone, but it's here. So this is another Arduino, so look at the difference. Both can do mostly the same things, but they have some differences. So what are the differences between Arduino? So for example, I'm going to show you here. Um, here, so this is the Arduino Uno. This is the most common Arduino, the most famous Arduino, which is the one that I have here. It has a USB-B, it has a place for, the, for a power supply, and it has pins that you can connect. Jumpers, which is this thing here, is a wire that you can just plug in those holes here. And it's good, the Arduino Uno is good, because um, it's really easy to prototype. Uh, to test things because you don't need to solder. You can just put this jumper in one hole and then put in another one and test your circuits using a breadboard, which I'm going to talk about today too. So, okay, so we have the Arduino Uno, but we also have, for example, the Arduino Mega, which has way more pins in case you need more pins for your project, but it's kind of big. And we have the Arduino Nano, which is way smaller. Arduino Pro Mini, which is even smaller, but without a um, USB. We have Arduino Micro. We have Arduino Pro Micro. And the Pro Micro is the one here. It is my favorite one. And we are going to talk about why. Um, we have the Arduino Pro Micro. We have even like an Arduino like that, which is the Lilypad which is good for wearables. If you want to put in your clothes and put um, conductive material, how do you say, um, conductive thread, you can thread in your shirt and actually make a, an electronic thing inside a wearable, in a shirt, in a pillow. So this is great for that. We have the Tinsy, which is a type of an Arduino. It's not made from the company Arduino, but you can program like an Arduino. Okay, so we have those, we have many different types of, uh, of Arduinos and some are better for one, for something and some are better for other things. So which ones, oh, so just one thing, like an Arduino also is the name of the company, okay? And you can find like Arduino or Genuino. Ar Genuino is sold in the United States and uh, Arduino is sold in the rest of the world and the Arduino is open source which means that anybody can get the files of the Arduino and reproduce legally and sell it. I believe you have to change the name but you can make a board that it's exactly the same and sell it or change and make your own. So that's why a lot of Chinese, Chinese companies make Arduinos that are so cheap. You can get an Arduino Pro Micro like that, I guess for $2.50. I don't know how much now, but they are so cheap and it's legal. And it's this, people ask me, oh, uh, is it the same quality of the Arduino, the original one? Yes, it's the same quality, um, but probably it's the same quality, this doesn't even matter, but why should you buy then the, the original Arduino? To support the project. So you should buy at least one Arduino, original Arduino, so you can support the project because everything is open source. Uh, you can use their ID with other boards for free. So just buy one original, okay? But then for your projects later, you can get from AliExpress, super cheap. Okay, guys, so... Um, 
One thing, which, my, which Arduino should you buy for a MIDI controller? You might ask, and that's, um, that's a question that I get a lot. Because we, we get overwhelmed, uh, right? Because look, we have many, and this is just the tip of the iceberg, we have many types of MIDI controllers. So which one should you get? So my advice is, you should get at least two. One Arduino Uno. Why? Because it's good for prototyping. You just plug the, the jumpers here, you don't need to solder, nothing. And you can test your prototypes. You can even use the Arduino Uno in the MIDI controller. However, there are some problems. When you, uh, a MIDI controller, you want that when you plug it, it's recognized out of the box, like a MIDI controller. You plug and in your DAW it says, oh, MIDI controller, badass MIDI controller is on. And you can just use it. However, when you plug an Arduino in the computer, it doesn't see a MIDI controller, it sees an Arduino. And with the Arduino Uno, there's a way you can convert it to MIDI class compliant, which is uh, what we call when plug and play. You can convert the Arduino Uno to MIDI class compliant, and that's not all of the Arduinos. Not going to get into much detail because I have a complete video of which Arduino to choose, uh, and just look here in my YouTube and I explain why. But some Arduinos can become MIDI controllers out of the box. You don't need to do any extra hack. This one needs an extra hack, okay? And the Arduino that doesn't need, or some of the Arduinos that doesn't need the, this extra hack, one of them is the Arduino Micro. And the other one is the Arduino Pro Micro. And another one is the Arduino Leonardo. They are my favorite because you can just plug and play and make it into a MIDI controller, okay? And they are tiny. And they are cheap. So I usually try to get the cheapest Arduino that works in my project, okay? So now that you know, my advice is the Arduino Pro Micro is my favorite. Uh, Micro is good too, it has more pins. And the Tinsy is actually the best because it's tiny, it's plug and play, and it has a lot of pins because there's the pin limitation of how many buttons, how many potentiometers you can plug. So the Tinsy is actually the best of them, and there's different Tinsies, there are bigger Tinsies. This is the Tinsy LC, which is great, great. But the Tinsy LC, the Tinsy family, is more expensive. Uh, if you live in the States or in, in Europe, they're not expensive. But if you live in Brazil, in Brazil like me, they can get really expensive. So uh, I prefer buying from AliExpress the Arduino Pro Micro. Okay, and with the Arduino Pro Micro, it has a pin limitation of the number of inputs you can connect. However, I will teach you how. Uh, I don't know if I'll, we're gonna have time, but there's possible to use something like called a multiplexer, an extra component that you can increase the number of inputs of an Arduino Pro Micro up to 100 and something, 116, I guess, I don't know. It's a lot or even more. So if more than 100 components in your MIDI controller is not enough for you, Man, okay, that's a nice project. But, so, Arduino Pro Micro is my favorite. Tinsy LC, it's probably the best, or a bigger one. And Arduino Uno is great for prototyping. And there's a video on my YouTube about that. So now, how do we do that? Okay, so now, that now we start to get our brains melted a little bit, if it's not yet. I'm just kidding. Uh, let me just get some water. Do you have doubts? Let me, let me see if you put anything here.
Yeah, Milo said that uh, Adafruit makes wearable boards. Yeah, besides the besides the the lily pad, Adafruit has really nice. Uh, they have their own boards. Adafruit act actually have their Arduino compatible because it's open source. Adafruit, which is a company, got the Arduino project and made different boards based in the Arduino that you can program like an Arduino. So, for example, there's the Feather board, which has Bluetooth low energy built in, so you can get a MIDI controller with a Bluetooth in just one board. So, really nice, huh? Okay, guys. So, I want to um, talk a little bit about electronics now. Okay? Shall we? Uh, oh, good question. No need for power supply with Nano. Let me get here to the Nano. Good question. Uh, actually, the Nano is this one, but maybe you were talking about the Pro Mini. So how the Arduino is powered, like power? From the USB, or if you're not using the USB, you can use this thing here. But if you're not using the USB and you don't have this, or you don't even have the USB like this, how, you, how can you do it? Every Arduino will have pins here that you can actually connect power through wires, so it's not that easy, okay? So you're gonna have to have your own uh, power pin so you can connect your power supply or your battery. So for example here, VCC is five volts, where you're going to connect five volts, and then here is ground. So you're gonna have to connect uh, five volts here, or raw, you can connect more than five volts, because the Arduinos are five volts. So if you connect more than five volts, here, uh, you might fry your Arduino, so you get the, the raw pin there. Come move me here. So the raw pin here, you can connect uh, a power supply here that goes up to, I don't know, depends on the Arduino, 12 volts, 18 volts. Okay, so uh, let me see if I have more questions. What are your thoughts on the Arduino Do for MIDI? I never used the Arduino Do, but I think it has, uh, you can use the MIDI, MIDI uh, I'm pretty sure you can use the MIDI USB library, which we're gonna talk about, and you can use it for MIDI. I think the Do is more powerful. The thing is, I, I, I try to get cheap, you know? I, tr I try to use the most simple, cheaper Arduino for MIDI. I don't, there's no reason why use better Arduinos like the Do unless you have it, or unless your project uh, has so many uh, components that it gets slow, um, or you want to do lights at the same time, then you can get fancy. Uh, but the TNC, if you can want to get fancy, the TNC is my favorite. Um, USB port of a Pro Micro almost always breaks after... Ah, that's a great question. So he's talking about, this is the Arduino Pro Micro, and after you program it a couple of times, it just dies. Bricks, it's called brick, like it's bricked, and you cannot use it anymore. And it happened today with me, because I formatted my computer and all the software is new, and like that was a big mistake. Um, so the, my Arduino Pro Micro bricked, but there's a way you can burn a new bootloader. Uh, you can't, you, you, bootloader is the firmware, only complicated words. It's the software that comes in the, in the Arduino. You can change its software to a better one. Um, and I use the SparkFun bootloader for the Arduino Pro Micro. And you need an Arduino Uno to burn the bootloader in the Arduino uh, Pro Micro. I have this, uh, I show this in my course how to do it, but how to burn a new bootloader, Arduino Pro Micro, if you Google, uh, I, if, I, if I remember, I'm going to put the link in the description, okay? But it's doable and probably won't happen anymore or not as often. Arduino Do is 32-bit and it's 84 uh, hertz. Yeah, it will be faster, it will be faster but doesn't mean that the Arduino Pro Micro is not fast enough. So, um, 
I don't know if you can perceive the difference if you don't use like hundreds of buttons, but only with testing to know, but definitely an Arduino Duo is way faster. And if you're doing lots of things at the same time, then a faster Arduino is good. So Tata's music channel, I am in the process of making a MIDI harp with 36 strings. I am not sure whether I should have used a Duo du or, or Mega. Um, I don't remember how many pins do have. As I told you, I would use an Arduino Pro Micro with multiplexers. Uh, I teach how to, 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 to do this in, inside the, the course. And I'm going to show you in the code what you can do. I don't know if I'm going to have time to show you exactly how. But I'm going to share you with you the code that I only share inside my course with you guys, which is the extended code, where uh, you can use multiplexers really easily. Oh, he said that the USB port breaks physically from the welds. I'm sorry. I gave you a whole explanation and that was not the question. Oh, yeah. Um, micro USB, it's not ideal, but you can um, get another like a USB extension and use a USB extension with USB-B, if that's the problem. Uh, you can even use, uh, get another USB with wires. So that, that's, there is a workaround, but the USB of the Arduino Pro Micro is not great. There are Arduino's Pro Micros coming with a USB mini now on AliExpress. Not the micro, but the mini. So take a look there. Um, okay, so let's go here. Uh, let's talk a little bit about electronics, okay? So two things we have to know. We have two different of inputs in the Arduino. Digital and analog. And that's important. Digital, try to... Think, of, think about a digit, just one digit. That's one or zero. One or zero. On or off. Pressed or not pressed. Pressed or not pressed. Okay? So, a digital input in the Arduino, you, you will connect components that's just on and off. Buttons and switches, keys. Okay? But analog... In the analog inputs, you're going to connect things that have a minimum and a maximum. It's, just, it's not just on and off. Okay, so potentiometers, uh, any type of sensor, you know, that uh, have an information that's analog to the real world, something that's minimal, uh, like a distance, you know, uh, you have a minimum and a maximum and infinite numbers in between. Any type of sensor that works like that, you will connect in the analog uh, input. So let me just show you something here. So for example, the Arduino Uno. Those are the digital pins where you can connect buttons. So it's digital inputs, but also digital output. So you will connect buttons or LEDs, motors, but let's just talk about inputs. So here, from 0 to 13, you're going to connect buttons. And we will avoid 0 and 2, because these two uh, pins here can be used to um, exchange serial information. Whatever that means for now. So we're going to use from 3 to 13 in the Arduino Uno, for example. And in the Arduino Pro Micro, from 2 to 9, 2 to 15 here. However, if you take a look here, which is the Arduino, oops, Arduino Pro Micro pinout, you can see that what is, um, I think what is, purple you can use as a digital pin so you can see that even the a, the a3 a2 can be used as a digital pin and the analog pins which are green 
are these ones, A0, A2, A3 from analog one, but you can also use this pin here as A10, this one here as A9, A8, A7, A6. So, some, so sometimes just looking at the Arduino itself, you don't know exactly which pins can be used for what. It's not that obvious. So you can Google Arduino Pro Micro pinout and you can see which ones are analog or which ones are digital. So how do we connect a button or how do we connect a, um, a digital pin? So a button is really simple. So where's my button? One leg, you can see that you have two legs. So how a button works? When you press a button, it closes the circuit. The energy will flow through the button. When the button is not pressed, the energy is not flowing. But when you press, the energy is flowing, the electricity. And one pin, one terminal you will connect in the Arduino digital pin, and the other one you will connect in the ground. So, for example, here, this is ground, and this is a digital pin. Oops. Are we doing well in the live yet? Okay, so one pin in the digital, one leg in the digital pin and the other one in the uh, ground. The Arduino will be reading in the digital pin if the current will flow through it. So when you press the button, the current will flow and the Arduino will read a voltage, a change in the voltage. Okay, so when we get this thing change in the voltage, we're gonna talk, we're gonna uh, tell the Arduino to send a MIDI note, for example. But the potentiometer, and guys, I have some free videos where I teach this um, maybe more in depth or uh, edited in a video here in the YouTube too. You can look for DIY MIDI controller workshop. But anyways, a potentiometer, and I'm going to change here to uh, my to my table. So okay, so here my table. So here's a potentiometer, and you can see that it has three legs. So I'm not going to get it much into detail, but this leg goes to ground. This leg goes to five volts in the Arduino. And this leg goes to an analog pin of the Arduino. So ground, five volts, and analog pin of the Arduino. So how can I actually build a circuit with the Arduino? without actually have to solder. Uh, so let me just look in the chat here before uh, we get into the circuit here. So questions about components, about the, the electronics. I know that we're talking a lot, but it is what it is. That's a lot, a lot to cover. Is rotary encoder better choice than potentiometers? That's a great question. Uh, I think I have a rotary encoder here. Yes, I have one here so I can show you. So here is a rotary encoder with click. So what is a rotary encoder? It has infinite turn. Some people call it... Um, well, how can I say... Um, infinite potentiometer or something like that because a normal potentiometer has an end, beginning and end, and a rotary encoder, no. 
it just increments uh, like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, or uh, 10, 9, 8, 7, just goes down or up. Rotary encoders are great because a potentiometer has a absolute position. So if it's in zero, it's in zero. And for example, if you want to map a potentiometer to two different parameters, parameter A and parameter B, and you can change the MIDI channel to do that, use the same components to map two things. When you move the knob, let, let's say you mapped par parameter A and left in zero. Then you moved to the, to, to, you changed your MIDI channel and now you, are, you, uh, you mapped parameter B and you moved to 10. You're okay, parameter one is in zero and two, uh, let's say A and B, uh, parameter A is in zero and B is in 10. Now I want to move my parameter A again, but remember that it was in zero, but now my potentiometer position is in 10. So when I move this, it will send the value 10 or 9 to that parameter A, and it was here in zero, it will do like that, bah! it will skip to the value 10. So that's a problem when using potentiometers, when you want to use the same component to map different things. With that being said, a rotary, a rotary encoder doesn't have this problem. It's just absolute. You can program this in a way that parameter A is in, is in 10. Okay, so you start in 10. Oh, that now I changed to, to bank A and it was in zero. Oh, I can start from zero. It is great, right? But great powers come with great responsibilities. And um, uh, the problem is that it is way harder to use. First, rotary encoders are not analog, they are digital, and they have two digital pins. They are hard to use, unless you take the making music with Arduino course where I teach exactly how to use rotary encoders, exactly the way I told you. So in my code, in, in the code that I'm going to show you today, it implements rotary encoders. But there's another problem. Rotary encoders take two digital pins and um, can't be multiplexed. You can't use a multiplexer, that thing that I told you that increases the number of inputs of an Arduino for X reasons. So you need, so each encoder needs two pins and uh, can't be multiplexed. So if you want to use eight encoders, you need 16 digital pins. Um, so you need an Arduino with more pins. So for example, if you want to use eight rotary encoders, you can use the, the Tinsy LC. And there's another catch. Uh, it needs to be a special pin. Uh, it, it's not just digital pin, it's a special digital pin with interrupts. So there's, um, there's a lot of things about encoders which, which make them hard to use. They're great, uh, but they have this problem. Also, some people like to know exactly where they are in their, um, in their knob, you know, I know I can see because uh, with the encoder you can't see where you are where you are unless you have an LED ring like many controllers have. But also to create an LED ring is hard. So rotary, encode, rotary encoders are super hard, but totally doable. But inside the course I also teach exactly how to do it. Um, and I am I'm actually designing a controller with eight rotary encoders to use to control macrocontrollers inside Ableton. But anyways, let's see more questions. Uh, what do you think about interference? My pots never stay ready even if not touched. So I have to round up. 
Okay, so what about interference? Interference is a problem that can be overcome. Um, inside my code, you have a pretty stable reading in my potentiometers, but it is because I am using a filtering algorithm that comes the, using a library, which is the responsive potentiometer library. And you, you're gonna see that even in my code, when you, in the debug mode, when you're just looking at what's going on, you can see that there's a responsive reading. So that's, that's a game changer. So if you use the responsive, um, responsive read or something like that, uh, library, it basically solves this problem. It, it changes everything, okay? So that's a problem, but uh, inside my code, you're, you're gonna get a pretty stable reading. Oh, I'll just love a, got a Tractorino, nice. Tractorino was a project that I did for DJs. Okay, guys, so let's come here. Um, I'm going to turn me, turn me off here. So this is a breadboard. And what is a breadboard? It's something that you use to create connections without soldering. So you can see here, if it focus, but if it but doesn't focus, whatever. You can see it here that has lots of holes that you can plug jumpers. Jumper is this, so I can create a connection with a jumper like that, without soldering. But how? And again, uh, if you want a more in-depth uh, in video, go for my DIY MIDI controller workshop. But imagine that every, like this part here, every column has a conductive material below it. So if I connect, let's say in 35 here, this is uh, column 35, there's numbers there, and I connect another wire in line 35, I am connecting these two wires here because both are touching the same conductive material. So every column, so this is divided, so this is a division, so it's not connected all the way through, but it's connected in every column here and every column here in the vertical line, and here it's in the horizontal. So why we have these horizontal lines? Sometimes we need to connect a lot of components to the same thing, such as to the ground. We need to connect every component to the ground. So how can we connect all those components, like tens, tens of components into the same ground? We use a common ground. So my Arduino is connected, the ground of the Arduino is connected to this blue rail here, you can see here. Okay. You can see that two there, the ground is connected to the blue thing and buttons are connected to the blue thing and potentiometers too. And the five volts or the positive is connected in the red line. So that's blue, you usually connect your common ground and in the red you connect your common five volts. Okay, so that's how you use a breadboard in a nutshell. Basically, you can use to connect things without soldering. So here what I have. I have three buttons. One leg of the button is connected to ground and the other one is connected to pin two, pin three, and pin four. I have two potentiometers. One is connected to ground the other one to 5 volts, and the middle one 
is connected to an analog pin of the Arduino. So one, this one is connected to A0 and this one is connected to A1. So that's all you need to do here in this breadboard. Of course you can add more components but for now we don't need that. So guys that's it for the circuit for buttons and potentiometers. It's, it, it's quite easy, it's, it's pretty straightforward. Just having some water. And um, now I want to show you how you can make it into MIDI. Okay, so um, I just want to show you a quick example using an Arduino Uno, which is probably the first thing everybody uh, do of like how you program your first Arduino. Um, Okay, so here is my screen and I want you to go to arduino.cc So arduino.cc is where you can download uh, your the Arduino IDE so what is an Arduino IDE? An Arduino IDE is what I'm opening here. The Arduino IDE is this integrated development environment and it's where you program your Arduino. Okay? One thing that's really cool about the Arduino, and you can come here to software and you download the Arduino IDE. I'm not going to do that. Okay, you can download there when you want, but what you get is the Arduino IDE. Um, I'm opening here. Because of the live stream, the, my computer is super slow, but hopefully we can get that uh, going. So guys, please, Questions right now while the Arduino uh, while the ID opens. Boa noite, Eden. Artman, boa noite, Silveira. How can I make oh for next for next C S E asked. How can I make Arduino Nano a MIDI class component? Well, you can. Just a second, closing things up to see if we can get this going. I don't know if you're listening to me right now because it says I don't have a smooth connection. Well, I'm not sure this will ever open. But well, another thing you can do while this opens, and hopefully it will open, <laughs> but another thing you can do, <clears throat> you can go to the, you can go to the description of this video and there's the code. And you can go to the GitHub page and you can download the two, you can download the two of them, okay? Um, that is the code that we're going to use here in the Arduino. Um, and one thing, like, why it's going to be easy for you? Like, why programming can, how programming can possibly be easy? Well, programming is not. If you want to program your Arduino like I did from scratch, all the code that I use, I made it 
Of course, I used libraries. I adapted things from other people. But everything I made it, and I have been working on this code for years, and I only use for 90% of my projects. Uh, let me change to me, meanwhile. And I use for 90% of my projects the same. Oops. The same code, the same Arduino code. You know? Well, guys, my ID is not opening. I'm starting to get a little bit worried. Okay, so getting back to the to why it's going to be easy for you, because oh, it's opening now. One thing that's really um, nice about the Arduino community is that many people share open source projects, like I do, projects that you can just download online, and um, and use it, you know? You just need to have a little bit of knowledge of how to use an Arduino IDE, uh, which I'm maybe going to show you here, the Arduino IDE, but I also show you in the DIY MIDI controller workshop. Actually, today I wanted to show you way more uh, how to use my extended code that I only share inside my course which is the full, the extended, I don't, I don't remember the name, but it's the Arduino uh, full something, whatever, uh, which I'm trying to open, but maybe it won't. Yeah, it's super, super slow. But what I do, or what, what I do, in, at least what I do inside my course, the Making Music with Arduino, Besides, by the way, there's, I have three courses. One is the Making Music with Arduino. The other one is the Making Music with Arduino, the Arduino programming. And the other one is the KiCad PCB design. So three courses. The Arduino, uh, the Making Music with Arduino, the Making Music with Arduino, is a course where I teach you how to build MIDI controllers without having to learn how to code. You only need to adapt some things in my code. And I go step by step. What do you need to adapt to use buttons? How many buttons? Where those buttons are? What do you need to adapt to use a potentiometer? What do you need to adapt to use multiplexers to increase the number of inputs? How to use LEDs? Like how to use normal LEDs or digital LEDs so you can get LED feedback. How can you use motorized fader? How can you use rotary encoder? How can you use displays to actually see which channel you are actually in? Okay, so basically uh, what I teach is how you can do it the, in the easiest way possible. And the Arduino programming, the course, is where I teach you how I did that, how I program those parts. I teach you how to code, if you want to learn how to code. So the first is, I want to be, build MIDI controllers without learning how to code, fast. That's the making music with Arduino. I want to also learn how to code, that's the Arduino programming. And then, I want to learn how to build my own printed circuit boards like that. Like this is the Tractorino. This is a void wire. Like with a PCB, you don't need wires for the rest of your life. And it's easy to assemble, way easier to assemble, way faster to assemble, way more reliable, looks super professional. And like the Tractorino got super popular just because the PCB is super cool. And it's super powerful and super easy to build. Okay, so 
with that being said, um, let me say, let me see some questions here. How about sliders? And they don't require require a 10-bit ADC. A buddy of mine in Berlin has been working on a cool MIDI controller with faders, and he also built his own stainless steel. Okay, so sliders are exactly the same thing as rotary potentiometers. They're just in a different layout. This is a, a, a potentiometer is a um, variable resistor. You just change the resistance, it's like a resistor, like you are decreasing the amount of current that flows through it. And depending on how much you turn, you, de you decrease or increase the amount of current that flows through it, and then you can read this in the Arduino. A slide potentiometer is exactly the same thing. Uh, the Arduino has a 10-bit ADC. So I didn't talk about resolution, about bits. Maybe we should, but maybe it's too complicated for now. But uh, you need to convert analog to digital because you have the world is you have an infinite numbers between two numbers. That's reality. And until you can divide, until it's not divisible anymore. And it, it used to be the atom, and now we have quarks and things like that. But let's say it's infinite. But the computer doesn't have infinite divisions between A and B. You have to quantize this A to B. So let's say you have 0 to 5 volts, which is the voltage of the Arduino. So you're going to change between 0 to 5. And then you need to convert this to a set of numbers. You need to quantize this to a set of numbers. So you need an analog to digital converter. And the Arduino has the analog to digital converters in the analog pins. So that's what analog pins are. And the Arduino has a resolution. As resolution is how many numbers you can put between the minimum and the maximum. The Arduino has a 10-bit resolution in its analog pins, which 10 bits is like 10 ones and zeros. How many combinations of ones and zeros you can get with 10? 10 bits. You can get 1,024 numbers. So 10-bit resolution gets you 1,024. Does, does it mean that MIDI has 1024 numbers remember have you ever noticed that midi only goes from 0 to 1 to 127 so 128 values so instead of 1024 you only have 128 because the midi protocol resolution or what fits in a midi message is only 7 bits quite a feel it's not much so um, however there are ways you can combine two bits of seven and get 14 bit resolution which gets you I guess 16,384 numbers maybe and I teach you how to have how to use high resolution faders inside my course too um, it's a way you have to combine two bits. Uh, I, I, know, I don't know if I'm answering your question or just talking more, but um, resolution is a thing. And MIDI only has 128 possible values unless you create, you do something in the code, which it's super easy to do in my code. You just, you, you just do like one line like ta ta, and you can uh, put high resolution faders and you can get uh, 16,000 blah, 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 okay? So, um, someone said that the KiCad PCB design, link in the description doesn't, does not work. Well, I guess in the website, if you open another one, you can find it or like, you're gonna get emails from me. I'm going to annoy you a little bit during this Black Friday, but please, Unsubscribe from my mails. Don't hate me. Um, yeah, it seems that I have two 
streams at the same time but I, I'm not going to end this one because I haven't I don't want to touch it anymore okay thank you I know there are 7 10 and 14 bits exactly 1024 bits okay okay guys I have the Arduino ID here and let me get to my board again Okay, I'm not going to use the Arduino Uno because it's super slow just for opening an Arduino project. Okay, so I'm going to just stay with the Arduino Pro Micro, which is the one that we're going to use, oops, for our MIDI controller. And I'll do my best here so we can So you can see what's going on, but yeah, it's super slow. But here is the code that I want you to use, which is this, uh, there's the date which I last updated it, and the DIY MIDI controller full. There's the DIY MIDI controller, which only supports buttons and potentiometers. But there's this one that supports, uh, well, this code supports buttons, potentiometers, rotor encoders, motorized faders, displays, LEDs, addressable LEDs, multiplexers, um, high resolution faders, and many things. So it, it's quite powerful. Okay, guys, so I don't know if you'll be able to use this today but at least I, I want to show you, okay? So you're going to open the first file and you can see that it has lots of tabs. Each tab is responsible for doing one thing in the code. So the whole code is all those tabs together. Okay? Um, but we only change things in the first tab. Only change things in the first tab. This is where things happen in the background and here the first tab is where you configure things. So the first thing is choosing your board. You can choose, it implements, this code also implements different boards. The ATmega328 family, which is the microcontroller of the Arduino Uno, the Mega, the Nano, but this is not MIDI class compliant, okay? You need an extra hack, you need hairless MIDI to convert serial to MIDI. And I'm not going to show you how you can do that and it's increasingly less stable using hairless MIDI. So I try to avoid hairless MIDI and I try to avoid Arduino Uno Omega um, for, for my final projects, okay? Only for prototyping. Then you can use ATmega32U4 if you're using ATmega32U4 family, which is the Micro, Pro Micro, and Leonardo, which are the ones we want for final projects, or the Tinsy. And there's this debug thing here if you just want to debug the code in the serial monitor. So this will make you a MIDI controller, and this will make you, this is for you to see the messages that are happening. This is really important, really, really important. I always start with the bug because I will press the button and I will see in the serial monitor, which we can open here, which type of message is arriving. So no message is arriving because our MIDI controller is not set to debug. So we are going to copy this and only paste here debug. 
okay? So how we can use encoders, potentiometers, blah, 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 blah. This first section here is where you turn things on and off. And to turn something on or off is simply as typing two bars until it's grayed out. When it's gray, it's just a comment. It doesn't do anything. But if I delete, it gets color again, and now it's something. So, see the comments here after the double bar. Comment if not using buttons. So, to comment is double bar. So, I'm not using buttons now. So, I want to use buttons. So, I want to define this, not comment. So, here I can turn on buttons, potentiometers, using a multiplexer. I can turn on encoders, now pixels, which are addressable LEDs, a display. I can use banks, uh, which is great to use with displays and encoders. I can have banks, and I can change those banks using buttons. And for example, I can have banks for buttons, banks for potentiometers. A lot of things, and I explain each of those things in the course. Uh, here, I can also now uh, use LEDs. Like this is a bit shifter. It's if I want to increase the number of outputs of your of my code. If I want to use many LEDs, how can I use that? I use a bit shifter, which is something like the multiplexer. It increases the number of outputs. So a multiplexer increases the inputs, and the bit shifter in increases the outputs. Are you using a VU meter? You can use the LEDs as a VU meter. So I have here also coded uh, how can you use like a bunch of LEDs to behave as a VU meter. Although a VU meter can only be used with Tractor or Ableton Live using a Max for Live plugin I, I created. Uh, do you want the LEDs to be used as a view or LED feedback, like you play a note and the LED turns on? Here, high resolution fader. So for example, if I do this, now I am using high resolution faders. Nothing else more. Motorized faders. And even if you want to use with the Mackey protocol to use with Pro Tools. Also, if you want to change octaves with buttons. So many things you can turn on and off. For now, we only want buttons and potentiometers. Before we go forward, let me see if there's any questions. What about MIDI 2.0? Uh, MIDI point two, MIDI 2.0. I didn't actually take took like a great look at it. I know that's going to improve a lot of things, but uh, I'm not using it yet here in the. Um, in the, in the MIDI controllers. I'm really curious about, like if you guys uh, know more, you can tell me. I know that MPE, MIDI Polyphonic Expression, uh, got a big improvement, things like that, uh, resolution, but I'm not uh, totally aware of how to use it in the Arduino yet, okay? Another cool thing are piezo surfaces. Yeah, piezo are um, little disc that you can tap and it tells you the intensity of your tap. It's good for you to do velocity sensitive things, but not great. Piezo, have, Piezo has a lot of problems, which you should use another type of material, which is called um, Velo, Velostat. Anyways, uh, I'm not going to explain how to use velocity sensitive sensors right now, because it's a little bit more complex, but you can do something with um, Piezo, if you're not using like many piezos like close together, because you can touch one and the surface can vibrate and vibrate the other piezo and you can get false readings. And um, <laughs> I don't think, like Tian said, I don't think anybody needs mid 2.0. Well, w with high resolution fader, I yet don't see a reason to where I need. And even with the XT Synth, that instrument that looks, looks like a guitar I did, it uses MIDI polyphonic expression. 
uh, just like the Rolly Seaboard, exactly the Rolly, exactly like the Rolly Seaboard, I use in the XC synth and with, with normal MIDI. So it's really because I I don't see a reason why right now I need it, but if I need it, I'll start using. Okay, so after we chose what we are using, now we need to calibrate things or uh, we need to set things up. And when I say things set things up, so here are the libraries that I am using. You, you don't need to change anything here. Don't need to change anything here in the libraries until you get to this thing here, buttons. So here is where we start to configure things. And it's pretty easy. Can be a little overwhelming because there's a lot of lines, but if you just find what you're looking for, you can press Ctrl F or Command F to find things. So if you type like buttons and read the comments. Total number of buttons. Number of buttons in the Arduino plus the number of buttons on multiplexer one plus buttons on multiplexer two. So all the buttons summed you put here. So I have how many? Three. So just type three here. N then here, number of buttons connected is straight to the Arduino. Because you can have buttons connected to the Arduino or you can have buttons connected. Let me open, make it bigger here. You can have a multiplexer. So this is a multiplexer. No, this is a multiplexer. And this increases the number of inputs. So you can have buttons connected to the multiplexer. Okay? And that's going to be separate. So the only thing we need to change right now is number of buttons in the Arduino, or number of total number of buttons, which is three. Then total number of buttons in the Arduino, which is three, because all of them are connected to the Arduino. And here, the pins of each button connected is straight to the Arduino. So pins of each button connected is straight to the Arduino. Not the pins connected to the multiplexer. So I am connecting in pin 2, 3, and 4. Okay. Here is if you're using a multiplexer, which we are not, but you can configure here your multiplexer. Pretty straightforward too. Now this is nice. What type of message you want to send? Here you can configure if you want to send a note number, because like MIDI notes, C, C sharp, which are in numbers in MIDI, so like I guess 32 is a C, C3. No, 36 is a, th is a C. And you can use control change and you can use toggle, okay? And um, toggle is like you press one time and then you press another, you press one time, you get a note on, and you press another time, and you get a note off. And guys, we are going to do a 30 seconds break. I'll be right back. If you want to get a tea, go to the bathroom. That's what I'm going to do right now, because things are getting crazy right here. So I'll be right back.
And we are back. Oh my god. How can we possibly be doing a live that long without going to the toilet? Good luck for us. Okay, let's see the, the, the questions. I'm halfway testing the MIDI drums. If, if you have time, we'd love to hear about your theremin. Yeah, we can talk about that later. If I ever, if I ever done PCB printed FSR sensors, so um, just a second, I'm gonna grab something here. So about the FSR, so force sensitive resistor. Not exactly, but almost. So this is a PCB I've done, I made. And um, this is the PCB that I actually do in the KiCad course. I show you how I did this. I created this PCB while recording the course. So that's everything I did here. It's in the course, the uh, KiCad PCB design course. And this type of PCB, is made for you to use with rubber pads. So how does this work? The material that is here is the same um, as the velostat. It conducts energy, but depends on how pressed it is, it conducts more or less energy. So it changes its resistance depending on how much pressure you put on it. Okay. And here, going to make our life easier. And here, each of those things here are basically just two connections, two terminals. It has a fancy, um, it has a fancy drawing here, but basically is just two terminals. And when this thing here touches the terminal, we get a signal. And this type of thing can be used for um, something like that can be used for pressure uh, sensitivity. Okay. So I'm not going to use this with velocity, it's just on and off, and this thing here, the Feduino, uh, will be a fader port uh, clone, let's say. You know the fader port with motorized fader? That's the idea. So I'm going to connect this motorized fader, it's going to be in the side, and all of these will be uh, functions that you can control the DAW. There will be a rotary encoder here and the motorized fader. And it will be so easy to assemble because there's no buttons you need to solder. You just drop this here and it has LEDs. So each button can have a different color. Okay, so yeah, it's a, it's a nice project. I can't wait to, to get this done, like uh, the full controller. So let's come back. Where were where were we? Uh, let's come back. Okay. So let's configure our buttons. So here, put here the type of message. Oh, sorry, you're not seeing my my screen, okay. So now we need to edit this and this. Here is, put here the type of message you want to send. In the same order you declared the button pins. NN for node number, CC for control change, T for note, T for note number but in toggle mode. 
So this is pin two, three, and four. So this, that's the order I declared, first, second, and third. So now I need to tell, do I want a note number, control change, or note number in toggle mode? So I have these three options. So let's say I want note number, note number, and let's, let's keep it like that. I'm just, I'm going to change it here just for you to see. So first would be control change, second note number, and then note number. Then here, we need to tell which number we want, which note or which control change. So I want to send control change 11, let's say, and then note number 36 and note number 38. Now our buttons are configured. Then we need to configure our potentiometers. So go down a little bit until you find potentiometers. And it's pretty similar. Number, total number of potentiometers, we have two. Number of pots connected is straight to the Arduino, we have two. If we are, and oh, and the pins. Now for an analog pin, you need to declare with an A in the beginning, A0, A1. So first potentiometer is connected to A0 and second to A1. Same, if you're using a multiplexer, you're going to configure a multiplexer here. And here, potentiometers will send control change no matter what in this code, at least for now. You can send pitch band, but mostly you just want to send control change, okay? And here, you can type the number of the control change you want to send. And that's all all you need to do to build a MIDI controller. Uh, of course, uh, to program MIDI controller, there are other things you, you can do like <laughs> put wires and solder, but make an enclosure, but we're gonna talk about, more about it. You know, things here, for example, if you want to use encoders, you're gonna, same thing, you're gonna tell the number of encoders. You just change this. Oh, by the way, things with the star are the things you can change. For example, this doesn't have a star. This doesn't have a star. Doesn't have a star. Um, this should have a star. So you will change, if I remember, uh, you will change things that have a star here, okay? So number of encoders, then here uh, the pins of the encoders, but then it, it starts to get a little bit more complicated. You can actually store presets. Um, you can set up your basic MIDI channel for the button, potentiometer, encoder. Here, for example, you can change the colors of your, um, if you are using LED feedback with like a, like a MIDI fighter with a button that changes color, you know? You can change the color of your buttons. Man, here you configure the bit shifter, configure the view, the motorized fader, because then you need a motor too. The, it gets more complicated when you go down, like to things like motorized fader, so. But even then you can, just this you need to configure, you know, that's, that's not much. You don't need to learn, you don't need like a college degree, you know, you don't need months. You need like one day, maybe a couple of days, you know, but that's all basically, uh, at least if it is working, <laughs> okay? A part of, the, part of the maker journey is learning how to troubleshoot, is finding where the problem is. And trust me, you're gonna get problems, you're gonna have problems, I have all the time, but with time and with uh, techniques, like I have codes just for you to help you with debugging. Uh, I have a class only about how to debug, how to find the, the problem, how to troubleshoot, you know, which is huge, I guess, learning how to troubleshoot. But anyways, we want to see now in the serial monitor, 
First, we need to select the board. And if this doesn't get too slow, okay. So I want to select the board, the SparkFun Pro Micro. Actually, you will have to install the SparkFun Pro Micro board. And well, I'm not going to show you how here, but uh, you need to install the SparkFun Pro Micro board. Actually, it comes in Arduino AVR boards, the Micro. It's useful, but probably it might, it might brick your Arduino. And if it gets bricked also, you need to unbrick it until it works flawlessly. But anyways, you need to change, you need to choose your board. Could be an Arduino Uno, for example, the Dewey. But I am going to select Spark from Pro Micro. Uh, and port here, you need to select the USB port where your Arduino is connected. Usually it's this USB modem. It's MIDI now because it's working as a MIDI controller, but um, it's something USB or COM4, COM3, if it's Windows. And um, that's all you need to do. So then you have here verify and upload. Verify will tell you if you have any error in your code. So you're going to see here this bar, this bar that's verifying. I don't know how long it will take because everything is super slow. But you can also see your questions meanwhile. Uh, yes, you can do lots of good things with piezo microphone. I used to use one an amp to noise control my noise. <laughs> what? This is Milo Dodd saying, I used to use one to an amp to noise control my noisy neighbors. An entire wall can be turned into a microphone. So you put a piezo microphone in your wall and you amped your wall. <laughs> Are you a psychopath, Mr. Milo? That's nice, actually. I don't know what you did with that. Did you, like, did you call the police? Um... Is it possible some more info about multiplexing, multiplex config? Uh, dude, multiplexing is a little bit more complex. I have all the info you need inside the, inside the course, the making music with Arduino. But right now, there's no way like we can talk more because there's uh, information about how you connect the multiplexer and uh, why you connect that way, which pins are which. But yeah, know that this code here um, you can use with that and oh and when you download the code and things like that you can see the schematics and I have the schematic for the multiplexer so you can see at least how I am wiring the multiplexer oh noise control as in noise cancellation um, okay so you can see here that's done compiling if I got an error, it would show the error, but I'm not going to try to get an error here. I'm, I'm trying to avoid wasting time. So then you click Upload. So now the Arduino um, will receive the code. We, we will upload the code through the USB. And almost there. Okay, so we are done. Then, because we are in debug, we're gonna open Serial Monitor. It should be 115200 baud, baud rate. If everything went right, we should see something when we press the button. Button zero, Channel 0, CC11, value 127. Then value 0 when we release. So channel 0 actually means channel 1. In Arduino language, 0 is 1 when we convert to MIDI. In the channel at least. So remember I chose MIDI CC11. 
Then second button, note 36, velocity 0. Then when we release, velocity is 0. So 127 and 0. And then button 2, or the third button, note 38. Exactly like we configured. So it means that when I change this to Arduino um, or to MIDI, I'm quite sure it's going to work. If it's not working here, it's because either you did something in the circuit or in the code, okay? And then you need to troubleshoot. Now potentiometers, pot zero, channel zero, CC one, value, you can see uh, from zero to 127. And you can see here that responsive value, that's the actual reading by, uh, that's the actual responsive reading, uh, or the, the reading with the filtering. Remember when we talked about unstable potentiometers and how this code supports, or how this code solves this, makes a responsive or stable reading. So that's the stable reading. I could put here the not stable, but that's all, all I wanted to read here. So we should have value from 0 to 127, and here value from 0 to 127, and it only should move when you move the potentiometer, okay? If your potentiometer is moving, like if you're seeing values coming here, changing without you touching the potentiometer, this might be because the breadboard, uh, that's going to be more stable when you solder, but you can increase this value here. Go to potentiometers, And there's this variable here, ver threshold. Threshold for the potentiometer signal variation. Because it's always unstable a little bit. It's always moving a little bit, even if you're filtering. So you need to tell the Arduino only send a MIDI message if the, if the change is bigger than. So here I chose eight. And eight is an arbitrary value that I found testing, okay? You can increase this if you are getting a jittery potentiometer, okay? But don't do too much, do as little as you can. Okay, guys. Um, now I'm going to go to MIDI monitor. Try to open MIDI monitor, which is going to be a software that I'm going to use to, to monitor, monitor the incoming MIDI messages. So see here that I don't have any MIDI controller and if I press a button, nothing happens. Only happens in the serial monitor, but if I choose AT Mega 32U4, it press and press upload. Because everything was working now, we should have a MIDI controller. Um, Ten asked, yes, please explain, explain responsive reading. So uh, the reading, so there's something that's called um, floating, which is a noise, because every power thing, every electronics have some noise from the, from the power, from the, like, the, the current of your home, from, even from your finger, like from you, you have electricity and you interfere in the, in the, how do you say, the magnetic field of the Arduino, around the Arduino. So it's always uh, jittery. So you never have like, a, if you read the potentiometer in one place, you never have only like 100, 100 and 100 and 100. It's gonna be 100, 103, 98, 104, really fast, changing really fast. And there, there are algorithms that try to fix that. I don't remember the name of the algorithm used in the responsive, um, which is, what is the name of the library? I have the library here. 
let me find the library responsive analog read that's the library which gets this reading applies some sort of algorithm some filtering algorithm and then you get a responsive or a stable reading from the analog read of the Arduino it does all the work for you okay so this library is great um, so I think that now if we open MIDI monitor you can see here that I have Spark Fun Pro Micro in my MIDI controllers. So what the hell is that? MIDI monitor is just a software for you to monitor incoming MIDI messages, just to see what's, what you're getting from your MIDI controllers. It can be from any MIDI controller, okay? Um, so... Let me just fix something here. Okay. So, okay, come back to MIDI monitor. So, if I press here, now you can see that I am sending control 11. You can see here 11 in channel 1. And if I press the second button, I am sending note C1. Z 127 velocity which is maximum and zero and then here I am sending D1 127 and zero and here I'm I'm sending also my MIDI control change which we can use to map things and everything is working guys if it's working here it's going to work in your jaw I'm just going to change something because the notes are really low and I want um, higher notes because the pitch will be too low for you. So where are we in our buttons? Okay, so notes 36 and 38, let's make 60 and 64. Okay, so let's upload again and hopefully guys we're we're getting to the end we are our MIDI controller is ready I'm just going to talk uh, answer more questions get to a little bit of a uh, some anything that comes to my mind about enclosures but I just want to show you that we went from scratch until we made some noise and I, we want to do something in Ableton Live right after. And if you have any other sort of questions, please put in the comments. It's uploading the code. Almost there. Can see when it's when, that it blinks when it uh, uploads the code. Okay, so let's make sure we get we're getting other notes. Yeah, so Ableton. So let's get some instrument. Let's get a piano. No, not this one. Okay, electric piano, basic. And first, you also need to um, configure the MIDI controller in Ableton. If it's not too slow, I can open the settings, but it's going to show as Arduino Pro Micro. Okay, let's open the settings. <laughs> Everything takes ages, but okay. Here in MIDI, you can see that now we have Spark Fun Pro Micro in in and out. We only need to use as in because we're not using LEDs, for example. 
if we were using LEDs you could use out and select track and remote track is to actually play notes and remote is actually to map parameters so now that was my mystery sound if I press here I, we should listen to a note so we have our amazing two note MIDI controller and this I was like oh my god it's not working but because this one the first button is only for mapping so I can for example um, let's map the play button and you can see here that is CC11 so now if I press here play we don't have it stop bar should be in um, my keyboard so play okay so now we can uh, hear notes but what uh, what about mapping things so I'm going to click here on pan and move this knob you can see that mapped and I'm going to uh, map to this send here this other potentiometer so now you can see that it's changing the pan and we can add some delay guys in to so I don't know if you saw everything I did right now please put in the comments if you listened but I can repeat in case uh, I saw that I didn't get a smooth streaming right now but tell me did you see the mapping didn't you I'm going to wait a little bit come on come on streaming okay, maybe we are back <coughs> please let me know in the comments did you see the mapping did you see see that now we are we mapped the play button and note and we mapped the pan knob and also the sand okay just waiting a little bit to know if you are there Come on, come on, come on. Put in the comments. Okay, I think we're here now. Guys, okay, so I want to talk now. I hope you saw. <laughs> Please tell me if you saw the mapping in Ableton. This I saw it. Okay, okay. Okay, guys, so that was successful. So how can you go from this to a bigger MIDI controller? You know, from a... Um, something like this the process is pretty much the same but instead of using breadboard as connections you're going to use wires 
So here I have an Arduino, an Arduino Pro Micro. And I connected all my buttons and potentiometers in the same style as I showed you here. I'm not using even a multiplexer, it's just the same. There's no mystery. There, just in the code, I would say which button went where and which potentiometer went where. You know, how many and the type of message I want to send. You know, uh, something that might then, it's complicated, it's the, inco the, the enclosure. Um, the enclosure, is the, I think the enclosure is the thing that I took more time to figure it out. To, how to make like a professional enclosure. Let me get another MIDI controller here. This one. This is the MIDI mood, and it was inspired by the MIDI Moog app. So you can see that's uh, pretty similar to to the MIDI Moog plugin. You know, you have you can select waveforms. Uh, you have the, the parameters for filters, but that's just a MIDI controller. You, it's just lots of knobs. Uh, this has a multiplexer with an Arduino Pro Micro. That's how I have that many uh, knobs. But that's just a MIDI controller in the same layout of the Mini Moog plugin, which is a plugin that I really like. And um, you can see that the enclosure of this one it's pretty similar to the enclosure of this one, but this is wood with varnish, uh, but the design, the way they mount, is pretty similar. I design all my enclosures inside Fusion 360, which is a CAD 3D software, and then I export the files to LaserCut, and uh, I have some Fusion 360 videos here in, the, in my YouTube, and I also start from the same template, uh, I, I only choose like what's the length, blah, 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 height, the width of the material, and the whole design adapts itself. It's called a parametric design, where you just change some numbers and the whole design changes itself. The only thing I need to do at every project is designing where the holes will be, which is, which is kind of easier. And... Uh, and then send to a place to cut the, 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 the enclosure. This is wood, I cut with a CNC, but the other one is acrylic, I cut with a uh, laser cut. There's two companies in my town, so I advise you to look in your town to see if there's any people uh, using uh, laser cutters or CNCs or look for fab labs or maker spaces, hacker spaces, Usually, usually they have, or um, on the internet, you can find at uh, ponoco.com or Scoopteo. Put laser cutting online and you'll find it. There's many services, but it's more expensive. If you can find it locally, it's going to be uh, great, okay? What else? Um, let me come back to myself. Okay, guys, tell me, did you like it? But give me, give me your, your, your heart there in the comments. Of course, likes and subscribes are, are also welcome. Um, 